Looking for a victory, the Broncos make their way to Baltimore this weekend, a place where they've only won one time before. And we are getting you ready for kickoff. Hello, welcome into the studio. I am Phil Lani alongside Sidney Jones and Eric Dalala. Guys, what a week it's been around here. I mean, every day, a new report, a new something that came out. A lot of criticism about this Broncos team uh, sitting at three and eight. Sydney, uh, you're around this lock, locker room. You go in there every single day. You're yeah. around the guys a lot. Uh, what do you think? What's the sense? How, how are they going to react to a tough week around here in Denver? Yeah, Phil, um, it has been a really hard week. You know, we've heard time and time again from different players this week saying just how great Russell's relationship is in the locker room with every single player in there. We heard Dalton Reisner say on the podium this week that honestly, it's just outlandish that they're even have, having to talk about this and having to, you know, defend their quarterback. So it, it has been a tough week and, you know, all the players, they're going to rally around it. They know who Russell Wilson is, who he is in the locker room and who this team is. And I think a lot of this came up, obviously, because Mike Purcell uh, confronted Russell Wilson on the sideline last week. It makes sense that when you're three and eight, uh, maybe some tensions in there could be rising. Is this something, though, that, uh, Eric, they could say, it's us versus the world? I mean, maybe. <laughs> I think they just need to find a way to get a win, and that would help alleviate a lot of the stress, a lot of the, the things that are going on this week. I mean, I, I think right now, there's just such a spotlight on this team, and it's because of the expectations. If people thought this team was going to win, you know, or start three and eight, and, and people expected that, you wouldn't see this sort of microscope. But because, you know, the players on this team came out and said it's going to be Super Bowl or bust. You know, we're trying to host an AFC Championship game. Those sorts of things set the stage for this season. And because it hasn't lived up to it, now you've got all the media reports. Now you've got the increased frustration. But I think having passion and being frustrated is a good thing. It's better than just kind of giving up on the season. Yeah, most definitely. And uh, when Russell Wilson was asked about it, he said his confidence never wavers. Uh, he, he knows how much work he puts into it. And uh, here's what he had to say about his relationship with the guys in the locker room. You know, this is a great, great team. You know, we've got a great players. I'm, I'm honored to be here. I'm honored to play with this team and these guys. Um, you know, and so, you know, there's always noise especially when things aren't going the way that you want it to um, all the time. And so the thing is, is that uh, you, you, don't, you don't bat an eye. You know that you know, the, my biggest goal every day um, is, is, to, is to continue to, to try to lead at the highest level um, and to, to be consistent every day with my approach. Topic number two now, uh, continuing with the uh, Russell Wilson talk, you know, there's been a lot of pressure on this offense to just figure out something. I mean, uh, really struggled last week against the Panthers. Uh, wondering, Sid, just if you look at the injuries and everything that's impacted that side of the ball, do they even have enough weapons to do something positive on that side? Well, yeah, Phil. I mean, you mentioned it. The injuries have certainly hurt this offense. You know, Russell's been without Tim Patrick all season, you know, Jerry Judy and KJ Hamler the past couple weeks. And, you know, while some of the younger guys like Kendall Hinton, Jalen Virgil, Brandon Johnson, they've certainly stepped up and made some great plays. They're no Tim Patrick or Jerry or KJ, but I do think they still have weapons on this team. I, we, it, it's been tough for Cortland Sutton the past couple weeks. He's received a lot of attention, but Coach Hackett said this week that they're going to try and get creative to try and get him the ball somehow. And, you know, you can't forget Greg Dulcich. You know, he hasn't had many opportunities out there, so hoping to see him get the ball a little bit more. And, you know, one guy I really hope to see step up big this weekend is running back Latavius Murray. He had that huge 52-yarder. Um, last week versus the Panthers, the, by far the longest run of the season for the Broncos. So hoping to see this run game get going, and hopefully that will help Russ out. Yeah, Justin Outen said he had a little prize for the offense, yeah. uh, being able to do get, get more than, what was it, 18, 19 yards? That was the benchmark. So uh, a prize coming for the Broncos offense there. Uh, Eric, what do you think, though? I mean, if you look at these guys, it's not like he's playing with uh, some of the best talent in the NFL. No, I mean, obviously, this is not the ideal circumstance. This is not what the Broncos thought this was going to look like at this point in the season. But when you're a great quarterback, which we've seen Russell be at times in his career, certainly for most of his career, and even in a few uh, instances this season, you're able to elevate the talent around you. And that's what – he has to do this week against the Ravens. Listen, they've got a really good run defense out there in Baltimore, so it's going to be tough sledding for Latavius Murray. But their passing defense has allowed a lot of yards. This might be an opportunity for him to get it going through the air. And whether it's uh, him making a play 
or Nathaniel Hackett and Clint Kubiak scheming things open, they've got to find a way to get these guys going. And at the end of the day, you brought Russell Wilson here to elevate everybody around him. So if that is Brandon Johnson or Jalen Virgil or Kendall Hinton, you've got to find a way to put these guys in position to succeed. And then, listen, Kendall, Brandon, Jalen, you've got to make that play. You've got to rise to the occasion. It's not always going to be easy, but you've got to find a way to do it if the Broncos are going to get points on the board. In the last couple of weeks, we've seen Jalen Virgil and Brandon Johnson both score their first career touchdowns. Uh, somebody's got to make a play when it matters most. Uh, just something to get this uh, some points going uh, for this Broncos offense. Uh, here's what Russell Wilson had to say about the adversity facing the Broncos this season. I think mean, this team is being challenged in a unique way, um, but a way that's going to you know, mold us and grow us and challenge us and, and, and change us for the better. And I think that's what I'm excited about, about the journey. Like I t told you guys for a long time, you know, it's, it's a journey, for, you know, and I'm excited to be here for a long time and, and uh, us to turn this thing around. Topic number three now, uh, talking about just what a formula, what a game plan looks like for the Broncos this week as they make their way to Baltimore. It seems like nobody is giving this Broncos team a chance. The Ravens are favored by more than a touchdown. Sydney, uh, what's it going to take to uh, walk away with a victory? Well, Phil, I think first and foremost, this defense needs to try to find a way to slow down. I'm not even going to say stop Lamar Jackson. Try and slow him down. We all know just how, how talented he is and what a unique talent he has. Such a dynamic quarterback. Just him being able to make some explosive plays using his feet and using his arm. Um, so I think that's key. And, you know, I think for this defense, they really need to focus on stopping the run. We've seen them really struggle in that area the past couple weeks and, I think, you know, the Ravens, looking at the Ravens offense, they've struggled in the red zone the past few weeks and ultimately kind of the entire season. And as we know, the Broncos defense is top defense, top red zone defense in the league. So if they're able to hold Lamar Jackson to three points a couple times, I think that's key. Yeah, keep them out of the end zone uh, and see if this Broncos defense can uh, bounce back after a, a tough couple of weeks here. Some people are thinking maybe this will be a, a catch them game, a, a gotcha game for uh, the Ravens, but they're coming off of a loss against Jacksonville. So I think that they're uh, ready to get back in the win column too. Yeah, I mean, Lamar Jackson was obviously fired up after the game, going after a few people on Twitter. They're, they're not happy after that loss to Jacksonville. So you're going to get the Ravens at their best. This is a solid team, Phil. They're not going to beat themselves. So you've got to go out there and take it from them. On the offensive side, you've got to find a way to score touchdowns when you have the opportunity, you've got to find a way to avoid three and outs and letting this Ravens offense wear you down. That's going to be the key on that side of the ball. And then defensively, Phil, we saw a year ago the Broncos essentially dared Lamar Jackson to beat him through the air, and he did that. So I'll be interested to see how the plan maybe changes to maybe you give up a few more things in the running game, but you say, we're not going to get beat deep. We're not going to let them uh, torch us in the passing game. Look, I'll just say, I'll say this is one way you can look at it. Okay, the Broncos beat Jacksonville. Jacksonville beat Baltimore, so if you really think about it, the Broncos should beat Baltimore. Makes right? a lot of it sense. Just, makes sense. It just makes <laughs> a lot of sense. But uh, no doubt, uh, it's trying to slow down Lamar Jackson will be uh, priority number one. You know, I don't know if there's ever been a player like this. You know, there's going to be the Mike Vick comparisons and things like that. But, uh, you know, first of all, he's big, he's strong, you know, he's hard to tackle, uh, and he's probably the fastest guy on the field. So. And then obviously you can throw the ball too. So there's just uh, there's a lot of factors there, and uh, he's a special player. Time to wrap up now, and uh, we've done away with predictions. Uh, quite <laughs> frankly, we're just not very good at it. So uh, <laughs> uh, let's try a final thought instead. Uh, Sydney, let's start with you. Phil, I'm going to keep mine plain and simple. I think this team just needs to play complementary football. This defense needs to go out there and find a way to slow Lamar Jackson down, and this offense needs to put up some points. Yeah, get some momentum going. Uh, if the defense makes a big play, capitalize on that. Yeah. I like it. Uh, Eric, what do you think? Yeah, so this pass rush, it has to get going. It's been essentially non-existent over the last couple of weeks without Bradley Chubb, without Randy Gregory. It, it makes sense why they've struggled a little bit, but you're not going to win this football game if you can't get pressure on Lamar Jackson. You know, Nick Benito, Jonathan Cooper – uh, they've got to help out here, Baron Browning. They've got to find a way to get to Lamar and make a difference in this game. Yeah, I like that. Uh, set the edge, make sure that he doesn't get outside, and make sure the, uh, the pocket collapses on him. And I'm going to just say Russell Wilson. Let's see how he responds to uh, a lot of criticism this week. If he can go out there and play a solid game, maybe if the Broncos get in the red zone, score touchdowns when they're down there, and uh, maybe they'll pull off an upset. Uh, because at one point, Ravens and Broncos, that was a little bit of a rivalry. Uh, certainly, 
uh, dating back to the playoff game that, that we don't talk about around here. <laughs> uh, I mean, ever since then, there's been sort of a little bit of tension between these two teams. Uh, we'll see if the Broncos uh, can pull off an upset in Baltimore. That's going to do it for us. For Eric Delala and Sydney Jones, I'm Phil Milani. This has been Ready for Kickoff.